Today I'm taking a wee break from After Effects to use Blender to show how to make a more physically accurate kaleidoscope. The only video on my channel that has any sort of view count is the one making a, a mandala pattern or the a kaleidoscope I called it, but it's not really a kaleidoscope. So today I wanted to make more of a physically accurate kaleidoscope a representation of what a kaleidoscope is actually doing. Taking the, uh, you can see the triangle pattern of mirrors that run the length of the tube here. And this particular one has a little lens, so it takes whatever whatever's in front of you and turns that into the image that's reflected back and forth across these uh, these mirrors. Toy kaleidoscopes have little mechanisms in the front with little colored beads and things, but the effect is the same, taking an image and reflecting it back and forth infinite times to make a repeating pattern. And there are ways to do this in After Effects, but it's more cumbersome. So, Blender. First order of business is to eliminate that default cube. I'm gonna move my camera to uh, be essentially centered in the world. I'm gonna rotate that 90 degrees on the X axis just so it's pointing that away down the Y axis. I could do this in any direction. I'm just gonna do that because that's the way I orient myself, I guess. To create the kaleidoscope, add a mesh. It'll be a cylinder. And in our properties, we're gonna make it a three vertex cylinder there, three vertices. Just noticed I was losing daylight outside. Got to add a little something. Okay, F9 to bring back your little add cylinder dialog. I want to make sure I'm going to, instead of having the cap filled, I'm just going to have nothing there because like our actual kaleidoscope here, it's just an empty end. We're just looking for three faces that are mirrors. We've got that here. Um, I'm also going to have the radius be smaller. I mean, it's sort of arbitrary. I'm just gonna have it be half a meter. And let's just make it three meters long for no good reason. Rotate that along our X axis. We're gonna go exactly 90 degrees. Okay, now looking back at the scene here, I'm going to move the camera along the Y axis, negative uh, 1.5, just so it's at the, at the very end of our tube here. You can kind of see where this is going. This is the point of view at one end. At the other end of our tube, we're going to place an image and I'm going to use the um, add images as planes add-on, which you just have to activate inside Blender if you're familiar with it. Sorry, this isn't a helpful Blender tutorial if you haven't already done that. Let's see. I've got a couple different images here. I'm going to go with, uh, I'm going to go with this colorful purple flower that I took when I was a kid. And plop that in there. Why do I have the preferences open? Let's go into our shaded view here for a second, kind of see what we're looking at. There is our image. Oh yes, important part to set up the scene. Eliminate your lights, because the only light we want is the image itself. We'll take care of that in a second. I'm going to move this along the y-axis almost to the end, so like 1.45 meters. I actually do want it to intersect a little bit with the end here. I want to have it intersecting physically with the mirrors, which is impossible in real life, but it will actually work to our advantage here because we're dealing with an image plane instead of a real world that's being reflected around. Okay, and then I'm going to scale that up at an arbitrary amount. Let's just do that 2.3, whatever it says. Nope, too big. We'll leave it right around here. Okie doke. So now we look through our tube and we see if there were no reflections on the mirrors in here, we would be looking at essentially three sheets of paper, so to speak. Okay, now we go to shading. And I'm gonna go back to our camera view just because that's kind of where we wanna be. Okay, we've got our plane selected, the image plane, and I'm gonna get rid of our principled shader and just do a simple emission. So now we're just getting the pure image data. It's not subject to lights or anything. It is the light source, in fact. And we'll just leave the strength at one. That's exactly what we want. I'm gonna take this opportunity to make sure our color management is set to standard because it's a JPEG. We'll just, it's not transforming the color data at all. Now we select the, the tube of mirrors itself. Go back to our uh, shaded view here. We're gonna create a new material even simpler than the emission, add a glossy node. Zoom in on this so you can see what I'm doing. And drag the roughness to zero. And what the heck, what's going on here? 
because we are in our preview mode, the viewport shading that's loading a default HDRI. We're getting a sort of reflection that we never asked for and never wanted. So let's go to our actual shaded view here and nothing happens. Why is that? Because we are in EV and this does not work in EV, this effect. We need cycles that actually physically calculates reflections correctly. As soon as you turn on cycles, there something is happening. This is what we want to see. This is beautiful, by the way. I took this photograph when I was in high school. I'm so proud of myself. So we can see reflections are happening. And so this doesn't take a thousand years to render. If I hit F12 to render that out, notice it's taking quite a long time. We're at 128 samples. And uh, I don't even want to wait for that. That is just taking too long. It is such a simple scene that we can go to our light paths in our render properties tab. This just determines how many light paths are going to be bouncing around when the computer is calculating what the image should look like. Now we only really have glossy bounces in this scene. There is no need for transmission or transparency. We have no glass or anything of the kind. So we can go ahead and take these values down to zero and diffuse actually we can take to zero as well. What we're left with is the glossy bounces. If we take that down to its minimum, you see that that just has very, that it has the fewest bounces that it'll, it will calculate, which does not fill our frame line. As you can see, the frame is not filled. So we'll just bump glossy up until we have filled the frame. We still have a little bit left. So let's go one more bounce and that's all we need to calculate. The fun thing about the emission shader is that it's not really subject to sampling. There's a better way to say that, that I don't know how, because I'm not as familiar with Blender as I should be. But what I mean to say is we don't need 128 samples. We don't even need 64 samples, 32. We only need one sample and render and blazing fast. That was less than a second for an HD image. I'm getting a little noise here on the edge. I wonder why that is. That shouldn't be happening. Sorry, I thought I was going crazy there for a minute um, until I remembered that one of the most important aspects of this whole setup is that you take your glossy material for your mirrors and you adjust the color because by default, the color is slightly darker than white, which adds a, sl a slight darkening effect with every reflection. So your middle will be the dark will be the brightest and every successive reflection away from the center darkens ever so slightly. And you can embrace that and make a pretty cool effect out of it. Or you can turn that all the way to white. So you're getting a perfect reflection. So you're getting no fall off and you are not getting any noise, which will allow you to go with one sample per frame on export, which results in some exports that are blazing fast and free of noise. Just over one second for that beautiful bit of render. My goodness, I'm just so pleased. So what can you do with this? Well, in our layout, we can then animate. So let's, uh, we are on frame one, our timeline. I will set that to 120 frames total. Let's set a rotation keyframe for our, uh, for our image here. And then I'm going to go to 121, 360 degrees around the Y axis. Cause that's the simplest and easiest thing and set a keyframe there. Now I'm going to our graph editor and I'm going to select the Y rotation. So now we can see our keyframe here. I've already got it set to linear interpolation, so it's not going to do any easing. So it's a little bit more of a cycle. Speaking of cycling, not the sport, but the uh, cycles itself. I'm going to adjust, I'm going to add a modifier here, a cycles modifier, which will al allow us to loop the action, repeating with offset before and after. That way we get the motion coming in and the motion going out. And the reason I've offset this frame here is because the last frame I export, I want to be the one leading into that position, which will be the beginning frame. So this will be a, a loopable export just for the sake of simplicity. There's no reason or rule that you have to do this, but uh, let's take a look through the looking glass here. 
Ooh, that's really cool. That's really cool. All right, so that is gyrating appropriately. One other interesting aspect of this that I would like to dive into really quick. Um, I'm going to split my viewer here and let's go with. I want to still have the camera view going so you can see what I'm doing. I'm going to go into edit mode with our with our mirrors and I will show you what happens. I'm going to select this edge here, the edge loop here on the end. So if we were to make the mirrors not perfectly rectangular, but to increase the size of the end, and you can see on the, the left there how that is sort of bending and creating almost a globe of reflections, which is a fun effect. Or if you shrink it down, you get an, an inverse effect. It's sort of a barrel versus pin cushion distortion difference. And unlike the real world, you could animate this property of what is supposed to be a physical object and get some interesting effects out of that. So that's how you can make a physically accurate kaleidoscope digitally with the free software Blender. And yeah, if you're interested in seeing, I've kind of figured out a janky way to get a similar accurate kaleidoscope with After Effects. Um, if, if you're interested in seeing that, I can go ahead and make a video.